active yet elusive. Octors are described as playful animals and an indicator of water quality in rivers and wetlands. There are 13 species of octor worldwide. But due to persecution, habitat loss, and pollution, our native British octor species Lutra lutra was nearly wiped out in England. As most inland wild octors are nocturnal, a wildlife park or rehabilitation centre is the only place to be sure to see octors. This is Sam, a four-year-old native British octor housed in an octor sanctuary in Buckfastley, Devon. With a long body and short legs, he appears lolloping on the land. But his slim, streamlined body, webbed feet and long thick tail make him an excellent swimmer. Sam often turns his back from you, unless you come with food to feed him. Sam uh, originally came from Ireland. Um, he was affected by oil um, from basically a boat. Um, the petrol basically got into his fur. An otter needs its fur to swim. Uh, originally he was taken into a seal sanctuary in Ireland uh, and basically the otter became too tame due to the length of time being kept there. Um, we have, as a sanctuary could have him here uh, as a tame otter and uh, we've had a vacancy and that's how he came. The sanctuary rescues his injured octors like Sam and when they cannot be returned to the wild, they keep them safe in captivity. Meanwhile, night vision cameras have discovered a return of wild octors to the rivers in the north of England after a 50-year absence. A team at the University of Sheffield, led by Dr. Deborah Tharson, is performing DNA analysis to investigate the distribution and diets of octors in the Peak District and Sheffield. It's a nice weir. It is difficult to count local wild octors as they are nocturnal, and even in daylight, individuals look the same. For this reason, the team is collecting octopool called Sprained, which is then being used for DNA analysis to reveal how many octaves are present in an area and if males and females are present. The work on Sheffield's octaves have been part of the Wildlife Trust's Octally Amazing project. It is exciting to hear that the DNA analysis of Sprains has detected at least three individuals and both male and female octaves on the river dawn surrounding Sheffield. Over 100 faecal samples collected from Sheffield and the Peak District are sent to the university's lab. The lab team first takes about half a gram of each faecal sample and places it in a separate tube. Next, the team extracts the DNA from the sample through centrifugation and concentrates the DNA. In this stage, the team can start assessing the concentration of the purified DNA using a spectral photometer. Otters are like human, they have two sets of chromosomes and therefore have two copies of each DNA fragment. They inherit one fragment from the mother and another from the father. By comparing the length of these fragments between samples, the team can work out which samples were from different individuals and how many individuals were present in the study site in total. To reveal the sex of the otters, the team targets regions of DNA that are particular links on the X and Y chromosomes. This is visualised using a DNA analyzer. When we're sexing the otters, we're amplifying fragments of different sizes on the X and the Y chromosome. In this program, we can see that the bottom sample is a male. It has the X and the Y uh, fragments. And the top sample is a female. It only has the X fragment there. Working out the number of individuals has traditionally been based on an estimate, which is just a kind of guess really, of how many otters there are based on how many sprains are found. This has never actually been checked out properly, so all the estimates we currently have of otters are all very, very rough and there hasn't been any true recording of numbers using an accurate method such as DNA analysis. 
once we establish how many numbers there are in a territory and possibly relate that back to the number of sprints we found, we could perhaps make a guess of how many there are in the country because the population is recovering after all the pollution that was around in the 1950s. The team is also investigating octodiets, combining DNA analysis with microscopic analysis to examine the bones, crustacean and other hot remains in the octosprains. What I'm doing is trying to identify some uh, fish bones, uh, try to recognize the species that they are in order to uh, reconstruct the diet of the octers. I try to compare this material with the material that we have in our reference collection. So far, so we have got some perch, some type of salmonite, we have got a bullhead, uh, and some type of cyprinids. What we're interested in is what the foodstuffs for the otters are. We understand what they are eating, um, and we can take steps to make sure that those species occur on the river in the local region. Uh, and when we've been walking along this river bank just now we've come across some crayfish remains. Uh, so there's, uh, down here we have uh, the body of a crayfish so we know it's relatively recently eaten because it's still quite red. Um, it goes a bit faded when it's uh, been exposed to the sunlight. And just below it uh, is, a, is part of the rest of it, so two claws there as well. So there's basically one, one crayfish being taken, so we know that the otter's been here in the last week. It is good that otters are eating these crayfish, so if they can somehow reduce the numbers, that would benefit the whole ecosystem. And obviously the otters are enjoying eating these because there are lots of evidence of crayfish claws from signal crayfish in the places where we are surveying. Last October, Dr. Rose recorded the first footage of octas in the Peak District. The DNA team has been working hard to develop new approaches to increase the data obtained from octa spring samples. The results are eagerly awaited as they are set to reveal new exciting findings about octa numbers and their diet in the Peak District.